with Season 1 of Black Ops Cold War approaching very soon, what are the classes that all the pro players are running? Let's find out. Hey guys, it's Boris or Dave here. Welcome back to another video. Today, we are looking at the best classes by pro players in Black Ops Cold War right now that you guys can take into either your competitive style of games or even into just your public matches to absolutely destroy enemy teams. Also, finally got the face cam back. I purchased a new camera, so I've got face cam in some videos now. Not sure if I'm gonna have it in all of them. I'm just trialing out for this one. If you like it, then do hit that like button and let me know in a comment below. So as I said, we're going to be looking at professional player classes, the classes that are being used by pro players in scrims and in public matches at the moment. And uh, if anyone knows best, it's the pros. So if you do enjoy these classes and you enjoy the video, then make sure to subscribe down below and hit the notification bell as well to be updated every time I upload a new video. Okay, so let's begin with assault rifles. The two most used assault rifles in the game right now are the AK-47 and the Krig-6. So let's start with the AK. This is the preferred gun for those who just want that raw, meaty damage out of an AR. Uh, it's a little bit harder to control. It shoots a little slower, but it does have that improved damage and in general in that medium range fight it will kill quicker than the krig so the current attachments that are being run are you're running an optic so either usually a mill stop or a micro flex i think both of these are really good um it kind of comes down to personal preference i like the micro flex on the ak and i prefer the mill stop on the krig and i'll be showing you that when we get to that class in just a second uh, next up, you're going to need a barrel, specifically the Liberator barrel on this gun. The bullet velocity on the AK is very low for an assault rifle. It's almost like it's only a little bit higher than the SMGs, which I'm going to show you in a bit as well. So in order to make your shots snap when you're actually either clicking or you're pulling that trigger, you need the Liberator barrel on. Otherwise, you're going to be shooting and it's it's not going to hit instantly uh, and you might end up losing fights that you would otherwise win. So make sure you've got this on. It does make you lose a bit of aim walking speed, which is actually really annoying because aim walking speed is, is really good for assault rifles, but it, it's a give and take scenario here. So next is the Spetsnaz grip. It's an amazing grip. It gives you 6% vertical recoil control and 20% horizontal recoil control. You lose a bit more move speed here in terms of when you're shooting. Um, but this is almost essential on the AK because we're not running a muzzle to reduce our recoil on this. You need the Spetsnaz grip in order to kind of tame the AK to a point where you can win those medium range gunfights. Uh, finally, then we're going to be running the Gru Elastic Wrap, which gives you 30% ADS uh, time, 90% flinch resistance, allows you to aim while going prone. Uh, you lose a bit of that shooting move speed and a bit of sprint to fire time. So a little bit of speed's lost, uh, but you're much stronger in those combat scenarios. And we're going to bring back up that sprint to fire time using the KGB skeletal stock um, and also giving you back some of that aim walking speed, which we lost previously. So Pretty nice overall, you lose a bit of hip fire accuracy, but these two attachments, uh, on, you'll see on many guns, are just the go-tos, uh, having that last handle and the last stock, because they just give you that massive boost in sprint to fire time and ADS time that um, you really need in order to actually win fights in this game. If you wanted to go opticless, and I think there is a genuine argument for that, then we could remove the optic, and then I'd recommend running the KGB Eliminator, uh, this basically makes the gun have like no recoil because it gives you 17% vertical recoil control, which is insane. Um, you have to then deal with the, the iron sights and the AK, which are, they're okay. They're not amazing, but um, this is actually GA'd in pro games, in pro scrims at the moment because of how good it is. So if you wanted to stick with GAs, if you're someone who's actually looking to go a bit more competitively, then probably either run the muzzle brake or the Spetsnaz compensator. But for me, I don't feel like I really need them with this gun and I just stick with my optic. So optic, barrel, under barrel, handle and stock. There's our AK. Next on the list, as I said, we have the Krig. The Krig is an amazing assault rifle. It's my preferred assault rifle of the two that are being used mostly at the moment because it gives you so many advantages over the AK. Yes, it doesn't have that BT power behind it. It has less damage. It has a little bit less... Um, bullet velocity than 
when we fully kitted our AK before, but it has enough bullet velocity that we don't really need to add any attachments in the barrel slot, which is really, really nice because the barrels actually slow you down a lot. As I said before, things like the Ranger barrel, that was the equivalent of what we had on the AK, uh, that reduces that aim walking speed. So when you're aimed in, you're moving around, you were just way slower with the AK. And we don't have to run any, any of these because the, the effective damage range and the bullet velocity are good enough to just not need to run one. So we're going to run the mill stop on this. I find that the mill stop works really well on this gun. Um, if you prefer the microflex, go for the microflex, but definitely want to run an optic for that accuracy. Muzzle, we're chucking on the infantry compensator, which gives you a load of vertical recoil control, basically negates your vertical recoil control. And it does take away 8% of your horizontal recoil control, which some people will look at and say, oh God, I don't want to lose that horizontal recoil control. And usually I would agree, but you've got to remember these are percentages of a total value. So if we look at the details here, you'll see that the vertical recoil control, if I go between having this on and off, so um, it's hard to see, but if you see here, if we, had, if we didn't have it on, so we had the suppressor, vertical recoil control would be 276. And then putting it on, we'd take 12% off of that. So we go down to 242. So we've had a 34 jump in that vertical recoil control, whereas because the horizontal recoil control was so low in the first place, we only gain um, basically two or three, 2.5 horizontal recoil, or like we lose, we lose like three horizontal recoil control. It's not an issue. So infantry compensator is definitely the one to go for. Barrel, as I said, we're not going to run one on this. And then we're going to go straight to the underbarrel. Now, this is a really interesting one that I've seen a lot of pros running. Um, people will most likely just look at the field agent grip and go instantly. It's like the best grip in the game. You basically run it on every single AR and or every gun in the game to an extent. And I, I would agree. But I find that this gun is such a laser that you don't really need this. So this gives you 6% uh, vertical recoil and 20% horizontal recoil. I find that you don't really need that extra 6%, we've already taken off so much from the infantry compensator that instead we can run the speed grip. This gives you 10% sprinting move speed and gives you 15% horizontal recoil control. So even though I just talked about horizontal recoil control not being an issue, well, we're getting it back anyway from this grip. Uh, we lose a bit of standard move speed, a little bit of shooting move speed, and a little bit of aim walking speed. Not a huge amount though, but the sprinting move speed in a game with this kind of pace where even assault rifle players want to have that flexibility to move around the map, get to positions where they want to hold angles and hold lanes. Sprinting move speed is really nice. And I just think that this is unnecessary. And this is really nice. So try out between these two and see which one fits your fancy. But I like the speed grip. Next, we have got the standard combination. I don't really need to go through this again, but the airborne elastic wrap, and it's called the Raider stock on this. But it's essentially the same as the, uh, the skeletal stock that we had on the AK. Just increases your speed. And what you end up with in comparison, comparing these two ARs, you've got the AK that is just better at kind of damage and has... Um, Ends up with a bit better bullet velocity because of that barrel that we put on it. But the the Krig, uh, it, it has fire, higher fire rate. So the actual time to kill ends up being very close to the AK anyway, even though it has less damage. Um, it has higher effective damage range out the box. You don't lose that range, that range advantage that the AK being an AR you think would have, but actually doesn't have a huge amount of. Uh, you end up being quicker because we're running that speed grip. Overall, I just prefer this gun. And so it's the one I think you should run, but try them both out and see what you like. So that's our two main ARs. And now we're going to move on to SMGs. I'll preface this by saying that SMGs are actually harder to use in this game than they might first of all have seemed. The MP5 was insane when the game first came out, but that's been kind of toned down now. And um, SMGs just lose out to ARs in a lot of situations. So the way I've kitted these SMGs following what pro players have done is to really heighten what SMGs are meant to do. And that's to be quick and to be really, really strong in those upfront scenarios. So first SMG is the AK-74U. So we've, got, we've had the AK as an AR and the AK as an SMG is probably the best SMG to run. So we're not gonna be running optics on our SMGs because we're, we're, playing, we're playing up close and the, these guns have decent iron sights anyway, so we shouldn't be running anything else. Uh, the muzzle, we're going to be using the muzzle brake, which gives you 4% recoil control. Doesn't allow you to lose anything. The, the Spetsnaz compensator, while it does give you a lot of vertical recoil control, losing the horizontal recoil control in, com in comparison to what I was saying about the ARs, the 
the SMGs have loads of horizontal recoil and we don't want to add to that because we'll just be going all over the place all random and you won't be able to fight anyone beyond like a couple of meters in front of you so muzzle brake just to bring down that vertical recoil control is, is very nice next for barrel we have this task force barrel now this is a very controversial barrel to be using on guns because it gives you damage effective damage range and bullet velocity basically all of the stats of like i'm gonna kill you quicker but you lose some ammo and you also lose recoil control now i find that the way that i'm kitting this ak and the way this is this is the class that players like simp and abizi use uh, have been using for the last week i find that that loss of recoil control we're going to compensate for that in other areas of our build um but it's worth it because it allows us to just win every gunfight in those close situations that we can and that's what you need to do with smgs in this game you can't be picking up smgs and just using them like ars in this game you have to be kitting them to just destroy people up close and only lose out to maybe someone with a shotgun so i like this task force barrel you have to get used to the recoil control a little bit but these three stats are really nice on this gun next we've got the foregrip as the underbarrel attachment the main reason for this over something like the spetsnaz grip or potentially even the speed grip is that this just allows us to keep our speed up um i do like the speed grip i think that it's another decent option here um because it gives you the same horizontal recoil control which is very nice to counteract what we just did with that task force barrel um but i don't like losing these stats on the ak-74u just for a bit of movement speed it's weird because it depends on the it depends on the game mode Maybe in S&D, I would run this just for, because I like getting out there as quick as possible. But in respawn modes, where you've got to con more consistently kill people over and over again, losing these, these speed stats just doesn't feel as good. So go between these two. I wouldn't run the Spetsnaz grip actually on this gun as much. It could be okay, but full grip, no cons, just buffs that horizontal recoil control and it feels really nice. And then, surprise, surprise, don't need to go into it again, Grew Elastic Wrap and KGB Skeletal Stock for that speed that we need on the SMGs. And the final gun today is going to be the MP5. As I said, this gun has been nerfed, unfortunately, and it definitely doesn't feel as good in most situations over that AK-74U that I think is a decent powerhouse in the SMG position. But I'd say the MP5, what it has over it, it, it shoots a bit faster, so it's a bit more forgiving on your shots, and it's definitely more accurate. So you can probably, if we're going to rank all the guns we've gone through today, you've probably got AK-74U is for that really close range where you're just looking to just destroy someone in as little time as possible. MP5 is like close range, but then kind of close to medium. Uh, AK is like medium to slightly long, and Krig's like medium to long range so we've got the guns covering the spectrum which is good we, we, we get that kind of broad spectrum of guns that we can use in the game but let's jump into this mp5 so no optic of course muzzle infantry compensator um i like having that vertical recoil control on this gun i don't find this gun as hard to control on the ver on the horizontal side because we've got a lot more bullets coming out of this thing it's, a, it's it's got a lot higher fire rate so as i said it's a bit more forgiving having that vertical recoil control down allows you to win those gunfights at slightly longer ranges than the ak-74u barrel i'm going to be running the ranger just to get that bullet velocity as i said we're kind of kitting this to be a slightly more medium like close to medium range gun and also the bullet velocity on the mp5 is abysmal as <laughs> as an smg so you find it really hard to win any fights beyond close range if you don't have this kind of barrel on task force could be good on this if you wanted to just run it as like a really close range gun but you start feeling that vertical and horizontal recoil control losing it if you take that task force so i like sticking with the ranger or even potentially just the extended so that you don't have that con that you get from the ranger i don't find it too bad having 100 percent bullet velocity is never going to be a bad thing under barrel we're sticking with the speed grip here um because you're getting that sprint move speed i think that that's really important for these smgs you could go field agent if you wanted to uh really go down that route of uh buffing that recoil control but because we didn't go task force we're not losing as much so we can afford to grab some sprint move speed and be a bit quicker around the map so i think the svod speed grip goes nicely with the ranger barrel and then finally airborne elastic wrap and raider stock for that speed once again so these two attachments the last handle and the last stock is used across all these guns and there we go guys
So that are... So that just about rounds up this video. We've got four very good guns for different situations. Uh, my favorites probably being the 74U in the SMG category and the Krig as the AR, but the MP5 and the AK-47 also filling in some gaps where you might need them in your team if you need to counter how the enemy team are playing. If you stick to these classes um, or can maybe just adjust them as I gave those adjustments as we were going through, then you're going to end up getting a lot more consistent good games, high kill games, and uh, overall just having a lot more fun with the game. Really looking forward to season one coming out and seeing what they do to this game. I'm so excited for the M16 and the Org to be nerfed because I know that I know those nerfs are coming and it's going to make the game a lot more fun to use. I haven't even touched them yet. But uh, as I say, guys, if you've enjoyed, then please subscribe down below, hit the notification bell, and it's been Forza Dave, and I'll see you next time.